folks, welcome to Kate Draft with Jeanette. This is episode four. Um, if you missed the previous episodes, um, th this is um, all the cakes that we've made here. So the first episode was this wee field mouse with his apple. The second one was this um, lovely little fairy tree house. And the third one was this sleepy gnome. So you can still see them all on Cake Flix. You can um, pop back on and have a look at those if you missed them. And if you didn't miss them and you've seen all of them, Thank you for joining me for all four. How exciting. <laughs> well done. Deserves a round of applause. <laughs> so today we're going to change it up slightly and we're going to look at character cakes. OK, so the cake I'm going to work with today with you is, is this little owl. OK, so I've popped them on a couple books there. Now, they're just Rice crispy Treat books and they're covered in sugar paste. So if you want to know a little bit more about how to make the pages and things, I did very briefly do tiny little ones in this tutorial here. That they're just down here beside these bits. So very small versions of these. So you can always pop back and have a look at those if you want to try making these yourself. Um, and when I remake this owl with you today, I'm going to pop them on this little um, tree stump at the end. So it's just another wee idea of what you can do with your owls at the end, okay? So if you want to learn how to make a wee tree stump, then again, you can pop back to this tutorial, which is the Fairy Treehouse one, and that'll show you how to make all the nice um, wood effect on it, okay? Um, so yes, characters. I make a lot of character cakes, and a lot of them are animals. And when you're trying to get some sort of animation into your characters or like a little personality. It's sometimes difficult because they don't have all the features that a human has or clothes or anything like that, that you can't really um, sort of give the idea of the personality. So um, I thought we'd maybe go over some of that today. So we're going to make this cute little owl with these little wings and feet and eyes. But this one I've done in a very sort of straight on position. So his eyes are straight on, his wings are one even either side and his little feet. Um, so when we remake today, um, I'm going to just switch things just ever so slightly. So just tweak positions of things and it'll show you that just slightest little movements or slightest little changes can really bring a bit of personality to them. OK, so that's what we're going to work on today. So, um, yes, let's get started. OK, so here we have our little cake that we're going to start working from. Now, you'll notice, hopefully you can see this um, not too bad on the camera, but um, I was explaining that this one is very straight on. So it's just like a, a pear shape sitting very straight. This one, however, hopefully you can see that is off to one side. So slightly slanted. So the top half, it's almost like it's just been tilted slightly. OK, so if you're doing this as a cake, remember to keep your dowel, your centre dowel straight. OK, so just um, keep it centred so that the cake doesn't fall apart. But if you're just doing it as a wee model, um, just tilt it enough so that it's not going to fall over. It's not a huge amount tilted. I wonder if you, is that better? There we are. OK, so, but again, just sort of like a little kind of dumpy pear shape. It doesn't really matter for an owl, you know, they're, they're all different shapes and sizes, so it doesn't matter too much. So I'm just going to move this wee dude over to the side so you can still see him. And then we'll work on this one here, OK? So the first thing I'm going to do is mark in where my eyes are going to go. Now, if we've tilted the head, that means that the eyes have gone from being straight to slightly tilted as well, OK? So let's mark in where we think one of the eyes could be. I would say about here. This is going to be a higher up one. We'll just gently mark in with a rolling pin where one might be. And then the next one is going to be slightly lower down. Like that. OK. One up. One down. Like that. Now, when we're thinking about the eyes, we could just make them both the same size like we did here. OK, and just give them a kind of a wee steady look, a wee bit of as we would say here. <laughs> um, or we can think about maybe making one eye bigger, one eye smaller. Maybe he's got one eye closed. You know, you have to think about all these different things. Eyelids make a huge difference as well to the different expressions. OK, so I think what we'll do is I'll just indent that a wee bit more. Now, the tools and things I'm using. 
This is um, Cake Duchess covering paste. It's this beautiful stuff here. And it is mixed with 50 50 with um, modelling chocolate or candy clay, is it? I think you call it candy clay. So I make my own candy clay or modelling chocolate and I mix it 50 50 with this beautiful paste. And that makes a really lovely covering, okay? Um, I just find it really sculptable and it blends really well. So that's what this is covered in. So it's cake underneath and this is covered in um, that 50-50 mix. The tools I'm using throughout, I'll use them in all my demos. These are Cake Duchess tools as well. Um, so I suppose this one's like a Dresden tool. No, it's not. It's like a ball tool. This one's like a ball tool. Sorry. This one is like a Dresden. Yeah, and we use this one quite a lot. And then the other two, we've got like a knife and a sharp end here and then these are like flat end ball tools so that we can um, flatten in little areas for the eyes and things okay so that's the tools I'm using throughout but you may have tools yourselves that um, you can use that'll be sort of the same so I'm going to pick up the ball tool and we're just going to make a wee indent for where we want the eye to go. So when you cover the, the cake, when you cover the little owl, make sure, what I actually do is I covered the, the shape, which was like the little um, pear shape kind of idea. And then I added an extra piece across the front here where the eyes were gonna go. So that I had plenty of piece to work with behind um, the surface, okay? So that we're not pressing in and damaging the cake too much. So I'm gonna do one eye open. So I'm just gonna, work work in the little shape that I want like this gradually press it in there we are make sure it's in deep enough so that you get that nice sort of um, pushed back eye and then this nice feathery effect round there we are so we'll think we'll do one eye big and then I think we'll either do one eye closed or one eye small. Let's do one eye small. Let's see what difference that makes. So we'll do a little eye. One bigger eye, one smaller eye. Okay, and this is what I was talking about at the beginning. Just um, changing things ever so slightly and it just gives, starts to give a wee bit of a personality to the owl rather than just a sort of flat owl. There we are. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out this feathered area around the eyes. So I'm going to use the this tool here. I'm going to use the sharper end of it. And I'm just going to work from the middle and draw it out. So if you want, you can put a little guide all the way around so you keep it kind of straightish. But it doesn't matter too much because you're going to stick a big eyeball in there. Just keep working all the way around, pulling it, pulling the paste out. There we are. Let's turn it so it's a bit easier for me to work. There we are. There we go. So that's the beginnings of one of the eye sockets, okay? And you can see it's already beginning to get a little feathered edge, which is what we want. And there we go. Um, I'm just gonna use my ball tool just to redefine that little eyeball shape that I want in there. There we go. And then we'll do a smaller one here. Now you could, if you wanted, keep the feathered areas the same size and just make the little eyeball smaller. I think we'll go for a slightly smaller feathered area and let's just see what happens. A really good idea just to play around with these things and see what happens, see what sorts of expressions appear. It just makes for a much more fun cake. And it means that if you have more than one on a cake, more than one owl on the cake, they can be interacting with each other, not just kind of sitting staring at each other. <laughs> Which is maybe what owls do, but sometimes you want them to be looking like they're having a party or whatever, you know. There we go. So we've got one bigger, one smaller. Let's try that. There 
There we are. And I'll just put a wee space in for a wee eye. One big, one wee one. Okay. Looking kind of cool already. So you can see that this eye is slightly higher up than the smaller eye. We've gone with that angle that we had on the head. If he's tilted his head, his eyes will tilt too. Okay. So just remember that when you're positioning your eyes. We'll just make that come together so we get a nice little nose area as well. You can see here. Kind of a bridge of a nose if they had such things. <laughs> there we go. Right. So the next thing to do is then texture all the rest, which takes forever. So you'll see I've already started on the back here. Okay. So we're going to texture over the whole thing. And then I'm going to show you how to make these extra little fluffy bits, which just give it a wee bit more texture. Keep it in view. Okay, so all I'm really doing is going around the whole owl with the sharper end of this Dresden tool. This is the first stage. There's a few stages, but this is the first one. So go over the whole owl. I've already done some of the back because that really would be quite mind-numbing watching me do all that. You'd be losing the will to live by the end of that. <laughs> so I thought I'd start off a wee bit before. So just marking all these round. And the idea is that this just gives like a base texture. And then on top of that, we can add um, the little feathered texture. So when you're coming around the eyes, just be careful. Slow it down a little bit so you don't mess up the nice feathery bit that you've got there already. And then up at the top, come from the middle and move outwards. And just work with the shape that you've got. So remember the middle of this is not up and over like this. The middle is actually, you're wanting to follow the line of where the head, the tilted head would be. So it's slightly over like that. Join all this up at the back. And round at the front here, you do the same. So just, if it's easier to pick up and hold it, I've got a wee, on a wee card so I can do this. Um, just very carefully as well, round the eye section here. You just come right down from there. Right down from between the eyes there. All the way down there. So this is a bit laborious, but it does make a difference. And this is sort of somewhere between it being a, a kind of really cartoony looking owl and still like almost a little bit of realism to the feathers. Not You're not going to do every single feather, you know, we're just going to kind of do a halfway house. A happy medium where we're getting quite a nice bit of texture and quite a nice bit of cartoon look to them but not so a uh, cartoony it's just completely flat you want a, a good bit of texture because they really are wee fluffy wee things you know fluffy creatures so you want that to look the same on your on your character Nearly there. Nearly, nearly, nearly. Oh. A right workout on your hand, this. And your arms. Right. Just lift them up to get that wee bit there. So don't worry too much about it. Just You're just wanting that kind of rough texture. Hopefully that's getting picked up. You can see that. Not too bad. Okay. If you've lost anything around the eye, just work it back out again. Don't worry about that. Any of the detail and just go back in and pull it out again. There we are. Okay, so the next thing I do 
you'll see around the back here, is once I've done all these lines for kind of the base texture, I then use the other side of this tool, which is like, it's rounded on one end and flat on the other. So the Dresden tool probably has a um, similar sort of effect. Now I'm going to use the flat edge against the owl, so the rounded edge is away from the owl. But I'm just going to very gently press in a little bit, okay? So you're just bringing out a tiny wee kind of curved detail, like that. So you don't you don't want to be digging away into the cake. I'm really if you notice I'm really flat to the cake when I'm doing it. I'm not digging in like this. We're nice and flat to the cake, okay? And just you can work around in a wee pattern like um feathers would be. So you'd have one, two, and up above you'd have one in between. You can do a few patches like that, you can make the patches bigger, you can have a couple on their own, whatever. It's just really to give it just another um wee layer of texture that makes it look a wee bit more like feathers once this is all done. So just working your way around the whole cake. I tend to do some bigger patches, some weird patches, you know, just try and not be too regimented about it. I was saying in one of my other tutorials, I'm really bad for being to equal, I find being random a wee bit difficult for some reason or other. Always end up having a bit of looking really even, but if you can, try not to. <laughs> and try and just have it all a wee mishmash. Now remember, um, to try and keep your feathers in line with the head as well. So, um, like you wouldn't do a feather that way, it would be feathered this way. Working with the shape of the head. And the way the angle it's it's at. Do a few more down the belly here. And things to remember as well is you know if you're going to have like on this one we've got the the feathers the wings sorry right close to the body so you wouldn't worry too much about texture underneath all that because that's going to be wasted time you know. Just if you know where you're going to put your wings then don't worry about that area. We have been a bit random and a bit make it up as we go along today, so I'll just do pretty much everywhere to make sure we've got most of it covered. And we'll see what we decide. So just make sure you've got some on the top. But you can see it's all starting to come together and just looking that wee bit more eh, fluffy and feathery. Now, once we've done all that, believe it or not, I actually go back over with the Dresden tool, so you'll be thinking I've gone mad, but it just um, blends it in again a wee bit more. So just back over with the Dresden tool. Don't close up all those wee feathers completely, but just enough to kind of blend them a wee bit so they're not quite so obvious. It just works out a wee bit better. That's it. So they're not quite so sticking out. You don't want big holes all over them. You just really want a wee bit of a, a texture. And then after we've done this, there's one more stage to make them have that kind of feathery look. I wonder how many times I'm going to say feathery look today. <laughs> a lot, I think. A lot. Right. Now, I think we'd probably better stop for a wee quick 60 second break. And when we come back, I'll show you the next stage of the feathering.
welcome back to part two and we're going to continue on with the feathering. So we're just going to take tiny little balls of paste and press them on. And then using that flat and round end, not the pointy end, the flat and round end, we're going to use the rounded side this time. We're just going to press in and drag it up to blend it in. Okay. And you can do a few of these together, so just roll a few. You don't need to do them all over the owl. Well, you could if you wanted to, but you'd be there a long time. <laughs> you could if you wanted to, and then you'd be super fluffy. But you just really need to do a few, so do a couple beside each other like that, maybe. One, two, and then you can do another one on top, in between. Like that. And that just starts to build up an extra layer of texture. Okay. Now, the smaller the better sometimes with these. So don't go too too daft, don't go too big. Just try and keep them kind of small if we can. There we go. All the way around again. So just random places. Again, watch for where you're maybe going to have your wings or your feet or that sort of thing, you know. Don't worry too much about putting any in those sorts of areas. And it doesn't have to be where you made the feather marks before, it can just be anywhere. Just don't worry too much. The more random the better. You can do single ones on their own as well, just to fill a wee space. So it feels like a lot of work, but actually you soon get into the way of it and get a wee production line going. <laughs> you can do, you know, press on a few dots at a time and then go back to them all, all with your tool. Another one there. So you can see I'm just keeping the feathers going the same way as the head all the time. Yeah. They're all matching the angle of that body. We're not, um, we're not forgetting to, to follow that line. We're not keeping it too straight. Oops. So the more the do these the better really not all over but what I mean is don't just do like three you know <laughs> try and put a few around all three different areas around the back around the sides so on and then what you can do at the front I tend to like working on this a wee bit more so maybe put a little fluffy area around underneath his chin there so we'll do that just to that so for that, I'd maybe put one down at the bottom of the area that I want it to do, and then I start working up from there. So on this side. On the other side. Yep. And just slowly work that whole area in. And the smaller you can make them, the better, really. It does look a lot better if you can get them nice and small. I'm rushing today just to show you, but you know, get the idea. And you can take your time with this. You don't have to go as fast as I'm going today. You just take your time when you're doing it. So it's a nice way of just adding that wee bit extra texture like I was saying. That's what this is all about. Okay, I wouldn't do them all just now because that is probably a bit much for you to watch. But just fill it in. You can see where I've put a little section around his wee chin here. Okay, so other areas I've looked at, you know, I've put a wee fluffy bit on his tummy here. Um, 
and I put a few right at the very front, that's always a good place to put some, so we'll maybe do that actually. Pop them in. And this time I'm coming down towards his nose area. So you can see it just lifts it a wee bit, doesn't it? It just gives it a wee bit more fluff. There we go. So that will probably do for just now. Quite enough of that. Or just now. Okay, so you just continue on with your wee fluffy bits as many as you want round the back. I can I'll show you here again. So I've done quite a few, you can see them. Hopefully all there. And if you find they've not blended too well, um, you, you just use the, your, the sharp end of your Dresden again and just drag them in a wee bit like this. A few wee lines is all it needs just to blend it in a bit more. Okay, so that's how you do the extra feathering texture. So next, you can start thinking about wings and feet and what is he going to actually be doing, okay? So I think what I'll do is I'm going to put the eyes in. Oh, I'm picking up an awful lot of fluff today. I'm going to have... Fluffy paste, never mind. Right. So I'm going to roll one bigger eye. And pop that in. Flatten it down. So one big eye. And we'll try one small eye and see what he looks like here. One wee eye. Just pop that in. There we go. Oh, he looks like he's maybe had one too many, do you think? <laughs> one too many beers. Okay, <laughs> but definitely a wee bit squint. Right, so that's his eyes in, so that'll give you an idea. It just helps you get his character once you've started doing that. Again, anything you've accidentally um, bumped, just pop it back in again. There we go. So, we'll pop his wee beak on. For that, I just make a wee um, teardrop shape. So again, think about the size of it. Do you want a huge beak, a tiny beak, middle size beak? Do you want his beak open? You can do an open beak if you want as well. And I'm just going to pop it in the middle of there. Yeah. But again, you can think about where you want it. Do you want it up higher? That gives him a different look. Do you want it down lower? Again, that changes his look, you know, have a really good think about it. So I think I might actually give him quite a big beak. And maybe higher up. Let's see how that looks. Oh, I like that. Let's do that. Okay. Just gently press it into place. There we are. And then I just give him a couple of wee nostrils. <laughs> Are they called nostrils and oils? I don't know. It also just helps attach it. Attach the nose in. There we are. Okay. Little nose. Beak. Even. There we are. Okay. So now, ears. Ears are a great one. Ears are really good for character as well. So these again, I made these pretty straight. But you could have them. A wee twist is all it needs sometimes just to give it another wee look. So let's pop a couple of ears on. I'm just going to roll like a teardrop shape and just flatten it down gently. I'm going to use my Dresden tool, the sharp end, and pull towards the pointed end to get these nice little tuft kind of at the end. And then just turn it around and I'm also going to do it the same here just so it blends into the, the head of the owl nicely. There we are. So decide where you want it to go and I think we're going to do one here and we're going to get a right good curl over in the direction that he's throwing his head. Maybe he's dancing, is that what it is? What dancing that might be? Making some shapes. <laughs> Okay, just give it a wee press underneath as well, just to help attach it. Um, is this, can you see this? Okay, yeah, there you are. So I'm just going to make a few wee lines underneath as well, because if we're going to show the underneath, then I don't want that to be flat. I want a wee bit of um, 
texture on that as well. So yeah, let's just give it a wee, just think of it like a hairdo almost, you know, you're, you're thinking about, you're thinking of it like hair pretty much. Yeah, let's do that. Curl. You do what you like with yours. You try all different um, styles and things and see what happens. And sizes as well, that's the other thing. Okay, and then we'll put that one in. So same again. Teardrop shape, flattened out, and just the sharp end of the Dresden tool towards the point, just as you did before, and that gives you a few, few kind of fluffy ends. And then just a wee bit of this end as well to help blend it into the head. I think I've done that one a bit long actually, so I'm just going to trim it and reshape it. Yeah, that's better. Bit big, the other one. Okay, now again, if that one's high up on the top of its head because the head's tilted, then this one's going to be lowered down. So down here somewhere. I'm just going to gently look into the head. And this one, what will we do with this one? We can twist it maybe. We do that. That kind of looks cool. So again, just because that's going to be showing, I like to put a wee bit of texture where everything shows. So just a few extra lines. It only takes a second, but it just it makes all the difference, I think. He's definitely dancing, isn't he? We've got a dancing owl, I think. Okay. So you can see, hopefully, that you're beginning to pick up a different personality on the one that we're twisting all the wee bits and things than this sort of straight one that's alert and paying attention. This guy's having his own wee party, I think. Okay. So there we are. So what next? Feet. Let's do feet next. Feet are quite simple. I'll do the wings last, I think. Feet, I'm just going to take, again, with the feet, you can think about size. Okay, so you can have long skinny toes or you can have chubby toes with little feet, you know, have a good think about that as well. So for the middle toe, I'm just going to roll like a wee sausage shape. It's a wee bit fatter at this end. And then I'm going to roll two smaller teardrop shapes. So this is a really quick way of making wee feet for these guys. Okay, and you're just going to bring them all together. Like that. You can give it a wee roll, or if you want to use your wee Dresden, I don't worry about it too much because a lot of this you can't actually see once it's on with the wings and everything. So that's one foot, but we need two. I'll make another one. We'll get another main toe, I suppose you'd call it. A bit bigger, I think. And again, you don't have to be the same size. Maybe he's got one foot bigger than the other. Why not? And then the two toes beside. And just bring those together like that. Okay. So we'll just take a wee pause there for another break. And when we come back, we'll attach the feet and we'll look at the wings in part three.
welcome back to part three. So we've got our two little feet and we're going to attach those on. So again, thinking about where we're going to attach them. These two, the owl's just sitting with these feet nice and straight, but this guy's a bit curled over. So maybe one is lying on its side here, like this. And maybe the other one is up in the air, like this. So it looks like he's kind of half fallen over or maybe doing a little bit of a dance. Maybe we could put one this way. Maybe we could chop a little bit off and just have his toes sticking out. So that it looks like he's having a wee dance. That looks pretty good, I think. So have a think about that when you're putting placing items, you know, bits of um, bodies onto your animals. Have a think about where the positioning of them as well, because it really does make a difference. This guy's having a rare time, this. Right, double pop that in there. There we are. Okay, so you can see that looks nice and animated now compared to the straight one, which is still nice, but just showing you the difference of how you can really change it up. And we've not really changed an awful lot, you know, we just tilted the body slightly, we gave the eyes a bit of a tilt as well, the ears a bit of a swoosh, and a wee foot in the air. You know, it's, it's not a huge amount of detail changing, but the, the effect's really good, I think. So next we'll look at wings. Now for this one, I just had the wings coming down. So I put three larger feathers and three smaller feathers for each wing. Look at that, there we are. Um, I have a little feather mold. This is brilliant. I use it for loads of things. I used it on one of the other demos, actually. I think it was the fairy toadstool one. Um, the fairy treehouse, I mean. Um, so I can't remember where I got this. I'll have a look and stick it in the comments for you, but it's a brilliant wee thing. Two different sizes. Brilliant. So um, I've already pressed some out because I find that when I'm using the model in chocolate and sugar paste mix, when I'm handling it with moulds, it gets quite soft. So I generally mould them all and leave them all to sit out and um, just dry off a wee bit so they're not quite so soft for handling. So now we need to think about where the wings are going to go. So I think we're going to have one wing obviously down anyway, and then I think this one should be up in air. So what I did was I put some of these on little cocktail sticks. Okay. I just added a little bit of paste to the back to hold the cocktail stick on. And I think this is going to help us get these up in the air. Yeah. So let's have a think. Where would they be? Let's try the top one first. Let's have a go there. So we'll pop that in there. One. Oh, not that far actually because there's other feathers to go on. So the smaller feathers will pop on here as well. So it's like a double layer, a double layer of feathers. So one, you can always adjust these after if you just get a rough placing to the other one. Something like that. That maybe I still want them to be. I want this one to be up furthest, and that one a little bit less, and that one in further. So something like that. Um, yeah. Let's see how we can fit these on. So yeah, just having a think about how you want it to look. Really, we'll layer these on. That looks kind of cool. So I still want these feathers to be together. Don't want these ones spread out, but the other ones can be spread out because it looks like he's spreading his fingers out, doesn't it? So maybe something like that. Now the wings count flat, as in 2D. So what you can do is just give some of them a little twist. And it just makes all the difference. Yeah. So you have it on a good flap about there. And um, if the cocktail sticks bother you at the back, just stick another little bit of paste over the back there to help hold it in, or um, another feather or two, just whatever you, you feel. Um, I'm not going to worry about it today. There we are. So that's a good old feather in the uh, wing in the air there. And then the other one, I think we'll just do it flat down lower. So, just bring over. 
do let's see maybe mm, yeah we'll just attach them on here i think he's having a wee dance to himself i think so on there and another if you find these don't stick enough by the way you can always just use a wee bit of edible glue but mine's are sticking not too bad there we are so again what i'm going to do just so they're not all identical might be just give one or two of them a little lift just curl the end maybe you know i'll leave this one coming right i think We'll leave that one like that and we'll curl all these to it and then we'll just add the three little ones on top of that and that gives you a nice sort of double layered wing because there's not usually just a few feathers sticking out of them there's usually a few layers and then where the join here you can just do what you were doing before with these little tiny little feathers just stick a couple of tiny wee balls on and that just helps um, give a better kind of blend into all the other feathers then just like you were doing before and you see and basically hide <laughs> basically hide the seam there you are Okay, there we go. Get off of it. There we are. So you can see what a difference that's made. Just those few simple little changes, and look at the shapes he's making. <laughs> right, old disco diva, this one. <laughs> um, but compared to the the straight one, you know, it really doesn't take a lot just to get um, a completely different shape. So it's always worthwhile thinking about when you're doing your models and it's always very tempting and I do it myself just to make the, the model flat and straight and um, no weight to it. But if you have a wee think and a wee play around, you can really get something quite fun. So now that we've done that, let me think. Oh, his wee tail at the back. Always forget an owl's tail. Why do we do that? I don't know. So for an owl's tail at the back here, I just stuck on a few of those wee flower. Eh. <laughs> Flowers. A few of those wee leaves. Leaves? Oh my goodness, I'm going crazy. Those feathers. Oh, I'm tired today. I'm on my last week of homeschooling. Before the holidays. I think we're all needing holidays now. Should have just been a big holiday, I think, but anyway. Anyone else homeschooling just now? We're nearly there. Right. So yeah, a few of these feathers and we'll pop them on his wee tail. You can see how easily this piece comes out of the mould as well. It's really good stuff. Just a little teardrop shape and I just press it in as quick as you like. There we are. And I mean again, think about the tail, you know, you could you could do a lot with the tail if you want to. I think for demo time's sake we'll just do this. But remember the angle of the body, so you might want to follow the angle with the tail just give it a wee curl maybe or something like that that would do be there we go that looks cool and again just to hide up those wee seams you can just pop a few um, tiny wee feathers on like you did with the wings there we are Okay, now he has a tail. Looking good now. Oh yes, very good. <laughs> okay, so that's all these details on pretty much. Um, so all that's left really to do now is paint them up. So we'll start doing that. So I'll just move my paste out of the way. And what I did for um, painting them up We'll do it in just a second. I'll get all my paints together. Um, 
I just worked with some really basic colours. I had some yellow, I had some light brown, some slightly darker browns, um, a little bit of black for the eye. Um, and I think that was pretty much it. I think I maybe had a tiny bit of red. Really simple colours. Doesn't You don't need a huge range to be able to do this. Um, and we just added a, a, a nice kind of tonal range and then a little bit of white highlights as well. So um, that's what we'll do next. We can probably stop for our last wee break. Um, and when we come back then we'll finish all the painting. See you in a minute. I have great questions for you. Do you love all things cake? Do you want to learn from some of the world's best cake artists? Do you want to be part of our growing community of over 200,000 members? Then get yourself over to cakeflix.com where we've got some amazing deals on right now. We offer a 365 day support plus the most amazing Q&A service. You can now view us on all the main streaming services. So what are you waiting for? Head over to cakeflix.com now and become part of the Cakeflix family. Hey guys, welcome back to part four, and this is painting. So I'm just going to give you a general idea of how I go about painting these. Um, I have a selection of dusts, browns, yellows, a little bit of red, black and white like I was speaking about before. I've got vodka and I've got some water to wash my brushes out. I've got a big selection of brushes and some kitchen roll. That's it. So I'm just going to... I'm going to start with the eyes actually, I like to get the eyes in. So again think about what colour you might want to do them. You might want to do two different colours, they might want to be bright yellow, they might happen to have small pupils rather than these big pupils that we did on the previous one, you know. Have a good think about what um, style of eyes you want to do as well because all these wee details matter too. So I'm just going to start, I'm going to do this one the same as the other one over there. I'm just going to paint in a big yellow circle to begin with. And again, have a think about the direction you maybe want them to be looking, you know, that sort of thing. Or do you want them to be cross-eyed? So which way do you want the, the pupil to be looking? All these wee details to think about. It's very tempting just to go in and paint the eyeball and forget about these things. But these are all things that help with the character as well. Just paint it in a nice big circle there. I'm just going to use just vodka on my brush and I'm going to lift some of that colour off so that you're left with just like a wee thin line. I'm not going to do it all the way around, just on some of it. There. And that just adds a lighter side and a darker side so you've got a bit of shade and light to it so it's not just one flat colour. So we'll do the other one. I think this one I'm going to paint the whole thing yellow with a tiny little pupil. Let's see how that looks. I'll just colour the whole thing in. So again it's just dust mixed with a little bit of vodka. Usually need to do a couple of coats. So I'll just get one on and let it dry and then I go back sort out from there. So that's the eyes in. Because I've got yellow on my brush I'm actually just going to do his wee feet as well. Well we're here. So again just a quick first coat and then you can go back and do shading after that. So for like shading I would just use a sort of darker maybe orange sort of colour to this yellow and just in between his toes as it were. Just put a little bit of darker shade in there. Remembering this one as well. So same again, just a quick coat. And then you can go back and add more detail after. Try 
Right, that near here. I do use a bigger brush, I think. Later. There we are. <laughs> Working away with that wee brush, we don't have time for that. <laughs> fast, fast, fast. Right. So once I've got that, then what I'll do, get my little tool, there we are. I'm not going to worry about streaking brush marks or anything like that, I'm just going to sort all that after. Just a quick first coat and then I'll show you how I do the feathers because that's quite a good bit. I think I'll show you around the back. So you see at the front on this one I left his tummy area nice and white um, and I just did the two wings and round the head and round the back the browner colour. So that's what I'll do here. I'll do some on the back so you can see how I did it basically. I'll turn it around as well. Hopefully you can see that in the background. So I'm just going to pick up some yellow and some brown because I want a kind of lighter brown to begin with at the minute. There we are. And I basically just went all over it, just giving it um, kind of little streaks, I suppose, of colour. So again, this will get a second coat. Again, I'm going to use a bigger brush. <laughs> I'm often finding myself working away with this tiny wee brush thinking, what am I still doing using this? <laughs> bigger brush. Here we are. So just working away. Just getting some base colour down to begin with. It's a bit crazy to start with, but once you start adding all the different tones and things in and getting your highlights and things in, it all just kind of comes together. I'm going to use that to a slightly smaller brush. I'm going to pick up some of the yellow one this time. I'm just going to add it in some areas and you can see how that starts to, well hopefully you can see how that starts to bring up different coloured areas. You can also lift some off, some of the colour off if you just use vodka on your brush and then dry it off a little. You can start to lift some as well, take out little highlights that way. Now normally I would let this dry and then do another coat, so on and so on. And then once I got my nice layers worked out like this, then I would go back and I take some white and just where we had all those little um, extra feathers, I just gave them all like a tiny wee highlight just at the end where the light might catch it. All these ones. So I just went back round all those, giving them a wee, or most of them anyway, giving them a wee highlight. And then you can also just add in some extra petals if you like. <laughs> extra feathers, I keep calling them petals. Extra feathers. Just by adding little, tiny little um, marks. Just little individual marks all the way around. So you don't have to do it all over, just um, little areas all the way around. Just choose little patches, just like you did with the wee feathers, just choose the wee patches and work your way around, okay? So that's how I ended up with this, but you do have to work at it and work at it and layer it all up, yeah? Um, what else could I show you? Oh yes, the eye. Let's go back to the eyes. Let me turn this guy around. So around the eye, all itself. I added in 
um, some shading there. So I start, actually started off with just a very sort of yellowy kind of colour, yellowy brown, quite light. And I just worked in a wee shadow all the way around. And then I, I gradually layered it up and darkened it up. So I'll just start off with that. And then we'll add in some brown. Again, it's better if you can, well, sometimes better if you can wait for each little layer to dry, you know, just move around to another piece and work on a different piece and then come back again. I'm going to do some more feathers and then come back to the eye. That's the way I work. I kind of chop and change a lot. I'm just dabbing the colour in there. And then with a dry brush or a dry air brush, I'm just going to blend it a little bit more. Here I go wrecking my brushes again. <laughs> Here we go. And then I also put in some black or at least a very dark, dark brown, but I don't know, I usually add a bit of brown to the black. And I just put that right in there. Just gives it a lot more depth. Don't worry about it being too smudgy because you're going to come back and blend it all again. So again, dry brush or dry air brush. And just dab round. So if you can wait till it dries off a little bit, that's usually a bit better. Hopefully this will be enough. Just going to give it a little bit more brown. I seem to have lost the brown a wee bit. Let's add some more in. So you're just creating kind of this layer of shadow down towards the eye. And there we go. Now get there's a, good, a real good depth to that. So for the eyeball itself, once the yellow has dried, it's then just a case of painting in the black. Well, the yellow's dried enough for me to let you see this. So I'm just gonna do this one quite a big wide eye. Now you might find you need to do a couple of coats on the black, that's all right. Just do that. I'll just do the one tonight, today. And then on the other eye, I would do the same shading as well, by the way. On the other eye, I'm just gonna put in a little eyeball, a little pupil. Because he's definitely had one too many shandies, this boy. And here we are. So like I was saying, I would work on this more, but do like a couple of layers and things like that, you know, just to make it all a bit nicer and a bit neater. But this is enough just to show you. And then all I do is we just get a little bit of paste and we'll add in a couple of highlights because that makes all the difference. So for highlights, I'm just rolling a tiny little ball of white. We'll pop this one here. And then I also do a smaller one down below. And then on the other eye, I would probably just do a small one. If I can get a piece of paste. <laughs> there we are. Tiny one. Just off to the same side. 
maybe just catching the pupil and no more. Okay. And then it's just a case of working up the browns and the feathers. And um, all I did separately there, um, you can see hopefully on the feathers here, I just added like a central highlight down the middle with uh, of each of the feathers in white. Um, and that's it really. You just work away with all the layering of all the colours until you get something along this line. But there's nothing to say. You could, I mean, it could be purple, it could be green. You know, you can make him whatever you like. He's a cartoon character. You know, you can make him any colour you like. Right. Um, Beak-wise, yeah, again, I just coloured a little bit yellow and left a little highlight down the middle of it, and that was it for him. Okay, so um, I'll just change my camera angle and recap, and then that's us for today. See you in a minute. So there we are, guys. I hope you enjoyed this demo, and I hope you learned a little bit about getting more character into your cakes. Hope you picked up a few tips, and um, yeah. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye.